Welcome back, everyone, to our virtual Latin Sukha. Um, it is a celebration about unifying in the light of cultural diversity. Hosted by the Consulate General of Israel in New York, JCRC, and Impacto Latino. As you know, we are celebrating the conjunction of the Jewish holiday Sukkot and National Hispanic Heritage Month, which combines to create a very special Latin Sukkot, which we are celebrating and holding virtually because of the effects of COVID-19. But we still have such an amazing program for all of you, and we are so happy to welcome so many amazing leaders and advocates of diversity and education from New York and from all over the world. This will definitely be a Latin Sukkot we will never forget. I myself am an Argentinian Jew, and I'm so excited to be a part of this. Thank you all for joining us, and let's get started. Thank you, Sofia, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. There is no better time for us to gather with our friends in the Latino community than the Sukkot holiday, which falls amidst National Hispanic Heritage Month. Our friend Michael Miller will introduce our new guest. Shalom and welcome to Sukkot Shalom, the Sukkah of Peace. Sukkot, this festival is a festival of joy and it's a festival where we build Sukkot, we build huts outdoors and we invite guests known as Ushpizin. And today we have a wonderful guest with us. She is Lorraine Cortez Vazquez, the Commissioner of the Department of Aging for the City of New York and the former Secretary of State of the State of New York. Lorraine traveled to Israel with JCRC a number of years ago and has really been a long-standing friend, not only of mine, but also of the Jewish community as a whole. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Lorraine. The floor is yours. We have here with us Lorraine A. Cortez Vasquez, who served as the 65th Secretary of State of New York. Ms. Cortez Vasquez is the former Vice President for Government and Public Affairs with Cablevision. She was Chief of Staff to former New York Assemblyman Roberto Ramirez and served on the New York State Board of Regents. Since April 2019, she has been serving as Commissioner for the Department for the Aging under New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and currently serves as a Executive Vice President for Multicultural Markets and Engagement for AARP. Thank you so much, Ms. Cortez Vasquez, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So first of all, how are you celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month? And what does Hispanic Heritage Month mean to you? It, uh, I love that question because I celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month every month of every year of every of every year. Um, and that when I was with AARP and multicultural marketing, I, that's one of the things I always tell people, we should celebrate heritage and culture every, every, every month, uh, regardless of the culture, regardless of the, of the heritage, because it is about identity and identity is the most important thing. If it's what defines us. But in particular, given that we are celebrating this as Hispanic Heritage Month, I am celebrating Hispanic uh, Heritage Month by making sure that the Latino community exercises two very important things that are important to the Latino community. Mm -hmm. One of them is enrolling in the census. We only have one or two days left. And I believe we only have two days left. Um, and the other one is to vote. Make sure you get your ballot or start preparing for the vote because exercising our, your rights to vote is about preserving the democracy, but it's also about saying, we are here, we are represented, and we have a voice. Right, and we know that you have been to Israel. Can you tell us a little bit about your visit and how you felt being in the Middle East? I think Israel, my trip to Israel was one of the most enlightening, emotionally stirring, profoundly, deeply moving and um, experiences that I ever had at every level. And as a practicing Catholic, having the opportunity to walk, you know, you know, where, where, where Christ walked, uh, having the ability to see where um, all of the shrines and all of the places uh, where Christ walked was unbelievable. Being in, in Jerusalem, 
it is a cultural gift to see all of that beauty, history, all in one place, assembled. But it is the most, and it's also beautiful, and the food in Israel, I can't believe it. And the innovation and the ingenuity, it's, you think of this small plot of land has some of the smartest technology. The desalination, you solve the farming and water problems with desalination. You are in the technologically advanced, the, the kind of work that's going on there, the, the level of commitment of, of everyone in, in the country. You have some stresses and you have some challenges amongst your own. Um, that I think you know you will be addressing, but it is just it's it's an experience that I say to everyone to have. And going to the Red Sea and actually floating, it, it's an experience. No, you can't explain that to anyone. You can actually float involuntarily. As a matter of fact, that's all you can do is float. Um, but there's so many, you know, uh, the kibbutzes. We saw a nomad community. It's the richness of Israel, the combinations of culture, uh, the coexistence that really does occur in Israel, um, which is not highlighted a lot here. Um, what we always hear about is the conflicts, and um, and you know we saw some of the educational systems, and it wasn't propaganda. Trust me, it wasn't propaganda. Um, so it's just I think that we should be doing more of that um, as as much as we can, because I think that's how we be, truly become informed and educated about the people of Israel and their daily lives, which is just as important as the political uh, information that we get here, which is only a small, small fragment of what Israel is. Right. And how would you compare the diversity of cultures in Israel as to what we see in New York City? I it's it's it there is um, there's a lot of comparisons, you know. One of the things that I was that I was most uh, interested in and intrigued by was the integration of Ethiopians and the teaching of the language, you know, and I keep thinking what a challenge, you know, English as a second language has been for our community. And yet um, there's a way that you can balance both not having to give up your your language, but at the same time really fully immersed. And it really was an immersion program. So it was language, culture, way of life. And that, that intrigued me. Right. And how does it feel to have been the first Puerto Rican Secretary of State of New York? And what were your main concerns during your time as Secretary of State? Well, it took, and I, it's what I always tell everyone, it took them 220 20 years to realize that they needed a little diversity. And look how long it's taken us to even think about a woman leader. Israel did that many years before us, decades before us. Uh, for us to have women in the highest ranks of, of, of office. So, you know, I, I always think that being the first is obviously an honor. But the greatest honor in being the first is to ensure you're not the last, mm -hmm. because you have to make a pathway. You have to perform in such a way that you create a pathway for others. And I am very, very proud that since my tenure as Secretary of State, we have had now four other Latino secretaries of state. So I am really proud as a Puerto Rican. Oh, as a matter of fact, all of them have been Puerto Rican. So I'm really proud. I'm even especially proud of that. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our virtual Latin Sukkot. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your day. And, and this is a great opportunity. I love the connection between the Latino and the Israeli community. So thank you for this opportunity.